To flourish simply means to bud, to blossom, and to sprout. Picture a plant that is in full bloom, that has big, beautiful green leaves and luscious fruit hanging from it. Flourish. Because that's the picture that God wants you to have for every area of your life. That's why I ask you to prophesy over your neighbor. Because God wants every area of your life to be fruitful, to be beautiful, to be beautiful as the palm trees, as the scripture says, and strong as a cedar tree, not weak, but flourishing and beautiful with fruit, ripe fruit hanging from your life. And this doesn't happen by accident. This, this is intentional by God because of his constant care. It allows it to continue to remain beautiful. Now, let me say this. Everything in your life requires maintenance in order to operate to its fullest potential. Everything God gives you, he requires you to pay attention to it, to give it constant care and attention if it's going to be effective. Maintenance is simply regular care for something. Many of the things that we label as acts of the devil, beloved, uh, or a plot from the enemy, is simply neglect. There are many of the things that we suffer from and we attribute to the enemy and we try to rebuke him off of our homes and off of our relationships. It's not the devil. Some of it is simply our own neglect. Neglect of the things that God gives to us. And when we neglect things that require constant care, what we reap are negative consequences. When you neglect things that require your attention, and your care and your influence, we want to call it the devil, but really it's you. Is it possible that the things that are affecting you the most have nothing to do with the plot of the enemy? It's just that we've been given something that we refuse to give care to. Think about this. Think about your car. In your car, you get a new car, they give you a regular maintenance schedule. And that if you bring your car in for inspection and rotations or, 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 or replacement, that they say that your car will last longer if you bring it in for regular maintenance schedule. That means that these things are not designed to last forever. They're designed to only last a certain period of time. However, it will last longer if you bring it in to have those necessary things looked at and attended to. And the one thing about paying, not paying attention to your car is they have a tendency to break down at the worst time. So there's no need in rebuking the devil off of your tires. You just should have got them rotated. You saw that red engine light on, but you ignored it. And now you want to eat shot my high and rebuke the devil, but actually you should have took it in. Um, those of you that are business owners or, or you have a ministry, you understand that your ministry and your business requires your attention. You don't just put a sign on the store and expect things to happen. You have to have two things going on. You have to have the business that you have and maintain that. But at the same time, you have to make sure you're bringing in new business. And if you neglect either one of those, your business will suffer. Not because anything has been sent against you, not because you don't have a good product, but because you simply have not given it care and attention. You, you thought that you could just throw it out there and put XYZ businesses now open and nobody came in. Why? Because you haven't put the energy into it to bring in new business. And even when you got the business in, you didn't take care of your customers that you had. It's not magic. It's a method to it. Think, okay, let me go here. Think about your relationships. Relationships of any kind breathe the air of your attention and they're watered by the consistency of your presence. If you consistently disappear or disconnect, you will lose important relationships that many of us suffer and cry for loss of relationships because we have not mastered the ability to work through issues or challenges in order to maintain those relationships and some of the most important people in your life, be it your husband or be it your kids or be it your friends, they are asphyxiating from the lack of your presence. They are literally choking to death and you cry when they leave. But the real issue was that you have not given them the air of your presence. You thought that you can maintain a dating relationship or a spousal relationship or a friendship. Watch those people who find it very easy to disconnect from you. And you're foolish if you're the kind of person who doesn't care about relationships because God does everything through relationships. 
God does things through connections. And you say, well, if they left, I didn't need them anyway. But I, I disagree with you. There are some people who fit in that category that they didn't, you didn't need them anyway. But there are some people that God intended to connect with you for a reason and for a purpose. And you say, well, you just didn't need them. But God says, I put them there for a reason, to add something to your life, something that you needed. But because you're the kind of person who gets mad and disconnects, and you do not see the benefits. Sometimes there are people in your life that God intended to be there. And so now you're reaping the negative consequences of broken relationships, not because of the devil, but because of you. Oh, let me break it down to you. Some of these people that you disconnect from, you said they were toxic people. But the truth be so, sometimes you are the toxic person. I don't get no amens on that. <laughs> I disconnected from them because they were toxic. Sometimes you were the toxic person. You, it wasn't them, it was you because you have a tendency to disconnect, to pull the plug. And so now you suffer. Your, your, your spousal relationships suffer. Your, your relationship with your kids suffer. Your, your co-worker relationships suffer. And you suffer those negative consequences because you have not adopted the ability to maintain. It doesn't matter how many people God send in your life. You don't have the ability to maintain what God is putting into your life. Oh, oh, you prayed and asked God for favor. God gave you favor, but then you ruined the relationship. He gave you favor. Oh, y'all looking uncomfortable. It's going to be all right. Just <laughs> you look at somebody and say, maintain, maintain, maintain. Some of these people that left, there was a reason they left because everything in your life requires you to maintain it. Same is true with your soul. That your soul requires you to maintain it if it's going to be productive and fruitful. We don't participate in what I call soul care. Soul care. It's more than just a spa day. It's more than just a vacation. It's even more than just a little mental health day. When I talk about soul care, I'm talking about regularly, consistently participating in things that nourish your soul. Oh, we got the spa for the body. We got a vacation for our mentality. But what do you do on a regular basis to maintain your soul? That's why we have Bible study. That's why we have worship service. We don't have it just to have some place to dress up and go. We have it because this is the place that we come to nourish our souls, to, to get what we need from God, to, for God to water our souls so that we can continue to maintain. I don't know about you, but for the devils that I fight on a weekly basis, I don't waste the worship service. <laughs> I, 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 that's why we have such emphasis on our worship and our word because for the devils I got to fight I got to get a real good dunk oh, uh, anybody else know what I'm talking about I mean for the things I went through and the things I wrestled with and the issues that I battled I need a real good worship service where I can get wet under the presence of God and begin to nourish and to maintain my soul Jesus said it this way what does it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his soul. Why did he say that? Because your soul is the substratum. It is the foundation. It is the basis upon which everything else we have begins to, on everything else that we have. If you lose your soul, the word profit there is, is, is a business term. It, it's what's left over after all the expenses have been deducted. And many people, you have a lot of things, but you're losing your soul. And many times, because we don't participate in self-care, we go after things at the expense of our soul. We are weighted down with the cares of the world to the point that our souls are parched and our souls are dry. Because yes, I have acquired great things, but I did it at the expense of my soul. Uh, I did it at the expense of everything that matters to me. Now, let me go here. I'm not the kind of person who doesn't believe in having things. Because I believe in having nice things. I just don't believe in things having you. Third John said this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in good health, even as your soul does prosper. In other words, your soul prosperity should grow in proportion to your natural prosperity. 
that you should not have more things than your soul can maintain. Ooh. Oh, I'm preaching good. Y'all just ain't hearing it real good. Your life should prosper in proportion to the prosperity of your soul. That what happens is when we put so much emphasis on things, we end up being out of balance. And the cares of this world begin to suck the energy from us. And everything in your life, as it begins to draw the energy away from you, it draws the energy away from your spiritual life. And your spiritual life begins to suffer and everything else begins to suffer as a result of it. I'm talking about balance. Balance is, is what keeps a boat afloat in the water. When the pressure on the inside equals the pressure on the outside, the boat floats. If you get too much water in the boats, the boat will begin to sink. And for many of, us, many of us, we got too much stuff going on inside. And our lives begin to suffer and to sink because we are way out of balance. We, we have neglected our souls. And so we are eagerly running after things and saying, I don't have time for prayer. I don't have time for study. I don't have time for, for Bible study. And so what you'll find out is when you neglect your soul, what happens is it begins to affect all the things you think you have. And it's no wonder that your spousal relationships are challenged because your soul is parched. Yeah, you can have all the houses you want and the cars that you want and the influence that you want but if your soul is not nourished and strong enough to stand up under the weight that's what's happening with some of us we're being crushed by the weight of the things that we have and when that happens you find it crumbling because the whole thing was standing on the health of your soul and all of this my beloved is because of neglect not the devil not a plot, not a plan. I just got too busy to take care of the most important things in my life.